Hi, Ian Somerville. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the issues around scaling agile methods, using them for large systems engineering. What we have found with agile methods is that these are very effective when we are developing small or medium sized systems or system products that can be developed by a relatively small team and where all aspects of the system are under the control of the system owner. What is more challenging is to scale agile methods and agile practice to large complex organisational systems. Some of the success at least of using agile methods comes because we use small co-located teams who can all communicate informally, who get together in a single room and can work and help each other in the system development. Now that's fine when we're doing relatively small systems, but when we increase the size of these systems, it becomes impossible. Teams may not be co-located. That is, they're not all working in the same place. The system itself may be broken down into a number of individual programs and these are developed separately by different teams. So we don't have the possibility of everyone getting together to do the system development. What we need to do when scaling Agile is to think about how we can use Agile methods in a different kind of development environment but to maintain Agile fundamentals, incremental development, test first development, refactoring. These basic Agile practices that have made a tremendous difference in our software engineering practice. Particularly important issues that arise when scaling Agile, scaling Agile are contractual issues. The nature of software contracts between a contractor, a software developer, and a procurer, the organisation that wants the software, often depends on having a complete specification in advance. And this is contrary to the normal practice in Agile methods. Another problem is that Agile methods are all about system development, but if we look at real software development in large organisations, most of it is not new system development, it's, it's software maintenance, it's keeping existing systems going. And the extent to which we can use Agile in software maintenance as distinct from new system development is really very much an open question. And the trend to globalization, to using worldwide teams where we can have 24 hour development, where development is passed from one team somewhere in the world to a team somewhere else is contrary to this whole notion of agile development and, and co-location. Let me look at the contractual issue first. Generally speaking, when we set a contract with a software contractor, part of that contract includes the software requirement specification. Essentially, the contract says, this is the system we want implemented and we will measure your performance against the implementation of that system. And the contractor will estimate a cost for doing that implementation. With the incremental approach used in Agile, we need a different kind of contract. We need a contract that says, as a developer, we trust you and we will pay you for your time, but we don't know how much time that's going to take. And managers are wary of this because it means that the risks are all taken by the software procurer, the people buying the software. Whereas if we use fixed price contracts against the specification, the risks are shared between the developer and the software procurer. When it comes to software maintenance, the issues that we have to think about are, can a system developed using agile methods be effectively maintained? 
if the emphasis is on minimizing documentation, is there enough in the system which will allow another team to take over that maintenance and to continue that for perhaps 15 years? And then can Agile be used for the maintenance process itself? Can it cope with customer change requests which are not coming from a, an embedded customer working with the team, but are coming from all sorts of sources and all sorts of distributed over periods of time. It's not really compatible with the sort of rapid iteration model that's part of agile development. As well as the problems of the lack of customer involvement, the problems of minimal documentation, there's the further problem of continuity of the team. A lot of the value kind of agile comes because the team itself holds lots of information about the system in their heads. But the reality is we can't really continue maintenance using the same team because the maintenance happens over many, many years and the team itself will want to move on and do other things. So how do we provide an approach that supports agile maintenance and there's a, an approach which has been developed called DevOps which kind of tries to support this but again the extent to which that can be <coughs> applied to larger systems is open to question. So what we find that when we're scaling agile when we're using agile for larger systems we need to use a mix of plan-based and agile approaches. We can't go on a pure agile iterative development approach. There needs to be a decision made about how detailed the system specification should be. Some specification will always be required in advance. And then there's the issue of customer involvement. Do the customers want to be involved in the system? It's an inherent part of agile development. But in many cases, it's very difficult to actually get customers to engage with the development team. How large is the system? Is it possible to use the informal communication and agile methods? Or do we need documentation to communicate with teams? Remember, the different teams working in a system may be working in different time zones. So that if, if uh, work is passed from, say, New York to Bangalore, there may be no overlap in the working day. So this informal everyday communication may be extremely difficult to maintain and documentation of what's going on may be required. In deciding the balance between agile and plan-based development, we need to think of system factors, team factors and organisational factors. The system issues, how big is the system? The smaller the system, the more effective Agile is likely to be. What type of system is being developed? If it's a critical system, it needs an awful lot of pre-analysis. So you can't work with an informal specification. So the extent to which analysis is required before implementation makes a difference in choosing between a plan-based and an Agile approach. How, what's the lifetime of the system? If you think a system is going to last for 20 years, and that's not uncommon if it's a military system, then you need to have documentation that will support that system over its lifetime. It's probably unrealistic to work on the notion of minimal documentation. And the other important factor is the extent of involvement of an external regulator. If you need to get approval for a system, say from an aviation authority, then they will require documentation and the informal approaches as which are part of agile development simply will not work. Team factors are about competence. It's sometimes said that agile works if you have a very competent development team, but if you have a more mix of ability, a plan-based approach allows for the more experienced and knowledgeable developers to provide better support to the less experienced developers. I'm not totally convinced by this myself, but that's certainly a, a widely held view that it's all about having a very competent team to make Agile work. 
But certainly the team organisation is important. If the team is distributed, either working in different locations or with some members working from home, then more documentation, a more plan-based approach is definitely needed. Is the interactive development environment, the support technology that you're using for development, does it work with collaborative teams? Does it provide the support you need for agile practice? Organisational issues are around the contracts for the system, the customers and the culture. Contracts are a major issue and what you find in many organisations is that the contracts department have a number of different forms of contract and it's extremely difficult to write a new kind of contract because there's a lot of legal negotiations required to agree in the wordings for these. So there's always a tendency to say we stick with one of our existing contracts and that may cause problems if you want to move to an agile approach. Equally important is culture. Agile is about initiative. It's about people doing things without being asked. It's about people being trusted to do things. But in many organisations there's a top-down hierarchical culture where managers want to maintain control. If there's that culture within an organisation, it may be very difficult to adopt agile methods for software development. And finally, customers. The reality is that customers ask other people to do their software development because they're too busy to do it themselves. They're too busy getting on with their normal everyday work. Do they have the resource which can support the agile development team? And if not, they have to, the, the team has to work from a specification. What we see is that in order to support larger systems engineering, which will be the subject of another video, agile methods have to evolve. They cannot be pure agile, but they have to incorporate elements of plan-based approaches.